Hey everybody, Dom here. In this video, we're going to talk about how to read and understand a large code base and make progress towards adding new features and stuff like that. So the reason why I'm making this video is recently I took on a new project where I was basically given a template code of about 120 files of Swift code, which I'm actually working on right now. And what it involved is there's a lot of boilerplate code, there's a lot of uh, there was a lot of, you know, files that did different things. And, you know, when I started off, I was very intimidated. You know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to get started. And, of course, being a freelance developer, uh, you know, you don't get the help that you, you would typically do at a big company, right? So what I had to work with is I had to work with uh, very limited documentation and just kind of figure it out on my own. So I wanted to create this video so that if you're in that particular situation you know how to handle it and how to get through it right and I'm gonna talk about it in the context of you know if you have a team and when you don't have a team I'm gonna go over those two because not every company out there not every client is gonna be a well-oiled machine with a lot of help at your disposal right so let's get into it so if you're if you're involved in a very large code base, the first thing that I would go to is to see if there's any documentation explaining the code, right? And this is exactly what I did. I took a look at the template, and I took a look to see if there was any documentation. And there was, but the problem was, the documentation wasn't very thorough, and it was very, very high level. So it's really hard for me to understand and go through it, right? So. What you need to do is, if you have that documentation and it's very thought out, that would be the first place that I would go to. Now, the reason why I say that is typically when you work in a team environment, the thing that most engineers hate the most is if you ask repeated questions or you kind of ask basically stupid questions that are either in the documentation or some other form depending on the company you know maybe they store it in like a github repository or something like that it really depends on the company but from my experience that's one of the things that most engineers hate the most including myself so the second thing is if the documentation isn't clear there isn't any documentation what do you want to do what do you want to do is you want to take a look and see if there's any senior people who have been working on that project a little bit longer than you right so what you want to do is you want to ask them different types of questions in regards to you look at the documentation and if you don't if you, there's like a whole a gap in knowledge that you're missing then you're going to ask the senior developer hey what's this line doing what's this line doing that kind of stuff right that's going to be your second option now your third option if you don't have a senior they're too busy they have an ego what are you going to do well in my experience what you're going to do is what I would recommend is that you basically duplicate the code, like the entire code base, into a separate system, local on your file, such that you don't wreck anything in production. And then you just start to uh, experiment with different things, right? You're going to try to add features. It's going to break. You know, Xcode's going to yell at you. VS Code is going to yell at you. And then you're going to figure out, hmm, why is it giving this error and how can I fix that? This is exactly what I did to fix the code because documentation was limited. You know, uh, I didn't have any senior people to look up to. And, you know, so as a result, I just had to figure it out on myself and just go by trial and error. But remember this. This, it, the trial and error method is going to be the longest method to get yourself to the end goal, right? So if you have some sort of a feature that you need to ship by a certain date, then this is gonna be the longest journey there. So this should only be used as a last resort as compared to some of the other methods, right? Because typically you're gonna get information faster from uh, already existing documentation and from other people, right? So those are some uh, situations in some ways that I would personally deal with them when trying to understand a large code base. Now, we talked about where to go for help, but how do you actually do it and how did I personally navigate my way through a large code base? So what I personally did 
was I first looked at the UI elements, right? So I was working on an Xcode app, an iOS app. So typically you're gonna have different view controllers that go and uh, that are involved in different parts of the app, right? So right now I'm working on a dating app. So what you're typically gonna do is you're gonna do your home screen where all you do the swapping left and right, right? And then you have a place to go to your messages, so that's going to be your message view controller. And then you also have your profile view controller, where you're going to be involved in, you know, setting up your user profile, adding pictures and stuff like that. So what I did was, obviously I started on the home screen, right? I dissected, okay, so this belongs to this view controller, right? What's required on this view controller? Well, it requires a... It requires a reject button or the X button if you guys have used Tinder before. You have the check button or you know the swipe uh, swipe right button, right? And then you have a super like button, right? So I tried to look for those elements and see, you know, how the logic uh, how the logic was when I clicked on swipe left or right, right? And it would say if let user is equal to match or something like that, then it would display some logic go into another con another uh, controller and I look at that logic right and then I see okay how do I go to from the home screen to the messages screen right so I took a look and saw that there was a messages there was a messages view controller that was connected via segue to the uh, home view controller right so I went there and saw you know what's involved in that well there's an ATC user which basically gives you more information about the user profile and then you have different messages, the ability to, you know, unmatch and stuff like that. And then I did the same thing with the profile view controller. You know, you had your user, you had your ability to add a photo and stuff like that, right? So that was a video on how to understand a large code base and how I did it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. And give me a subscribe as it really helps support the channel and really lets me know that you really enjoy the content and encourages me to make more content like this. So, if you enjoyed the video, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.